it's Tuesday, I needed a shave, that can only mean one thing. Welcome back to Azales TV and part 11 of my crazy electromechanical clock build. Let's get right into it. Look what I got. Fancy new servos for the clock. £32 worth, that's this many dollars. All metal gears, digital. Let's get these unpacked. Okay, these are tiny. Good grief. They're actually a just fit as well. If I take into account the base thickness, which I'm going to mount these on before they go in the clock, the height of the servo horn, which is in here, and the servo wheel itself, it'll be just about small enough. Right, this is a servo I was testing before. That's your standard size servo, if you like. That's the one I got today. <laughs> and that is tiny. It's like half the size in either direction. Anyway. I've drilled a hole in the centre of this so I can mount it on the servo horn and have access to the screw. That would go on top of here like that, which would go on top of the wooden bracket which it all sits on. But what I'm decided to do instead, I'm going to mount it on top like this. So it'll fit on top there and screw down. This means that this is slightly lower down and the width of this and this and everything else combined is then within our limit, the height limit for the crank arm. But also, because I'm, I'm going to glue and screw it down, I'm not sure how all the epoxy will glue all of this down, so I'm going to, it'll be better, it'll be stronger fit to go around this collar there and inside that hole. There'll be a lot more surface area for the glue. So I'll make a much stronger joint. I'm also going to screw it down just in case. If nothing else, the glue may hold it just enough that I can drill through and put screws through. So like glue clamping, if you like. But first thing I need to do is polish at least the top surface of this up because drilling this out and removing the burrs of the file, it's scratched all the surface up again. So I need to clean that and then do the same with the other one. Then glue that in place glue the other one in place and then leave that overnight. I've got these drilled out and filed about as smooth as I can get them. I've taken a few dings and dents since I played around with them the last so I can't exactly file them really smooth and I've got grain, they're slightly warped when I've drilled the holes as well because they're quite big holes for this gauge and metal. But they sit nice and flat at the moment and they look all right, you know. I'm gonna clean these up with some alcohol Get rid of any surface grease and I just glue on there like that. When the glue is set, I can drill through the holes in there and put screws in and I'll lock it down further. These are now glued, so I can put those in the airing cupboard where it's nice and warm and they can set overnight. And while that's doing that, I'm going to do something with these. Now a few weeks back I marked these dots on this wooden base which denote the sensors of the pivots for these servos. So these servos will mount in here like this with the rotation point, the pivot point centered over those dots. I'm going to mount them on a wooden plate, a back plate which fits on like that and has a sort of L shape that gives the whole structure a bit more rigidity. So I need to mark these dots onto where the the temp onto the back plane, and then from the back plane onto the servos, so that everything lines up. It's like trying to do a brass rubbing, basically. I've got a rough idea where the holes are, where the marks on the board are, so I'll just rub over it, burnish the paper, and I get faint little marks which I can then find a centre of. 
Well, that was a lot of fun. That was fiddly as anything. So that's a template I'm going to cut out of wood. The marking holes are here and there. You can probably just about see those. I'm going to cut that out of this scrap bit of ply. Not really scrap because all of this I can use. I'm going to go about there like that. I could probably mark this out with a box cutter knife, score it and then break it. Be easier. File it smooth. Let's do that. When you remove the impossible, whatever remains, no matter how improbable, must be the truth. There we go. There's no trick to it. It's just a simple trick. So this goes here, like that. Out of clean up the corners and stuff. And these servos go here, like this. Actually, this way round. So the wires face down that way. So they get fixed onto this. So everything matches these holes. What I'm going to do is drill. I've actually drilled through these marks through to the back. So I'm going to place that there like that, get it all squared up, hold it in place, and then drill through the back to mark the holes for these. And it'll make everything perfectly lined up, which would be a lot easier than making that template. Although the template was good to make that to start with. So next job after I've cleaned this up, we'll be working out how the servos are going to mount on. They've got screw mount holes in the ends here, and I've got screws that came with the servos for mounting these onto various things. So I'm going to glue some pillars on here, and then very accurately work out where these servos need to be, and then screw them in place. So I'll probably have to measure some things. I'm going to measure from the centre of this spline here to these ends and the width of it as well okay so it is the next day I've done lots of work off camera because you don't really want to see me drilling and filing and sanding and all the rest of it so I did all of this I've got the end pillars these are end pillars this end which go on to here now the pillars on this side they would have got in the way of the cable so I've cut them with a slot in there so these go in sideways, all right. Cable goes in that slot, screws go in there, nice. Beautiful, here we go. Now also off camera, I've done a bit of work here. Drill the melting holes for this to sit on and screw down into. So it goes in there nicely, and this will be when this is this side connects there, and that connects to there with that linkage. Finally, I've added some reinforcing parts on the back because this is quite a thin plywood, and it is starting to bow and twist as I'm adding bits to it. So I've added these thick blocks of just off cuts of wood that I had so that the pillars can mount into this it gives the whole thing a lot more rigidity a lot more strength hey <laughs> hey okay this is a lot of fun I've got this screwed in place got these oriented correctly and I've wired this one up to my little hacked together device I've built so let's switch this on and have a look what happens lovely Right, let's make this linkage move. Now this is by no means precise or even accurate or anything because I've just got a drawing pin dropped in here so there's a lot of slop. But here's your basic idea. That move like that. And then when it gets to a certain point, eh, about there, this one will move and put it around the other way and back and forth it goes. So what I need to do is replace this drawing pin I've got just dropped in here with a proper sized linkage and everything else and actual going up through there and washers to space everything off so it's not good doesn't get caught on this or anything else and then I can work out how much this servo needs to move to move this linkage fully left and right 
and then I can program those scales into my program that's making this servo move because at the moment it's making it's moving fully left and fully right like that but when it's on this it's only going to move about that far so I have to program the scaling and I have to program that scaling to match my lookup table for the numbers the angles so the next job is going to be making that linkage pin right, I've dueled and tapped this crank wheel put a screw through and I've added a jam nut in there just not too tight just finger tight at the moment until I can get a spanner to get underneath of there taps it to M3 and I've only broken five taps I've not broken any taps and now here we can see how this servo moves his arm around so I go to there which will be full position and then this one and pull it back the other way so that will go back that way and it will be like that beautiful now currently my test circuit makes the servo go the whole 180 degrees I need to scale that back to that angle maximum so it's just getting slack there and this angle minimum so it's just getting slack there so next we'll be programming in the new numbers so now I've reprogrammed the new servo range into the microcontroller so now that's the maximum range there and that moves to there and that's the maximum range on that end there and there's a bit of jitter because it got to the end of the potentiometer but that's just potentiometer noise like there for example so next job we'll be programming in the lookup table for the discrete steps required to move this around the half circle but that will be next week well that's it for this week, so tune in next week, next Tuesday, when I'll be carrying on with this. I'll be starting the lookup table for moving the servo. I'll try and get this servo moving as well, so that they both move in tandem. And I'll have this linkage connecting that one as well. I'll also have to finish that pick there, like I have on this one, so that connects. I'm also going to be finish. I'm also going to be starting rather the circuit board, which will go down here somewhere for the electronics to go on, and the USB socket, which will go on the base, probably on the back behind this board, so it sits flush with the wall. So hope to see you Tuesday. Hit that big like button, subscribe so you keep up to date with everything, and leave a comment down below if you have any questions. I will see you next week. Have a great one.